let the record show, I totally agree with Robert De Niro. I am one of those people that suffer from Trump derangement syndrome. <laughs> I think he is a threat to democracy. Really? Um, I think that he led an attempt to cool his country. You know, he said he wanted to suspend the Constitution to overthrow the results of an election. At the least, that's just not a patriotic thing to say. I don't believe that. He absolutely said that on I True Social. I will look that up. He did. He, he said, wanted to he, suspend he, the con Constitution. He said, he said we should suspend the Constitution to overthrow the results of an election. He said it on True Social, then said he didn't say it. So I, I listen, I, I, I read up. Project 25. I'm one of those guys that's like, I don't know if he will necessarily uh, leave. I, ho I hope he does. Everything that you just heard Charlemagne the God say is spot on. And I refuse to believe that Greg Gutfeld, of all people, didn't know that Trump called for the Constitution to be suspended because he did. On Truth Social, he argued, quote, a massive fraud of this type and magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the Constitution. Greg Gutfeld knew that Trump said that. He just wanted to play dumb because there's not really a way that you can defend that. So, you know, if you just pretend like you don't know that he said that, then it's easier to do that then try to defend that because it's indefensible. It's unambiguously authoritarian. And any dictator throughout the world who's ever suspended their country's constitution, they've always had some bullshit justification just like that. Furthermore, Charlemagne's not unreasonable to wonder whether or not Trump would ever want to give up power if he was elected again. Because remember the last election? He claimed that it was rigged without evidence, and then he tried to illegally steal it with a fake elector scheme and has since floated the idea of seeking out an extra term, a third one in defiance of the 22nd Amendment. And does anyone actually believe that if he lost this election, he'd concede? I mean, this man is very clearly too narcissistic to ever admit that he lost, and he clearly has dictatorial ambitions. So I just feel like, why are we pretending in 2024, the year of our Lord and Savior, that this man doesn't want to be a dictator. He very clearly does want to be a dictator. And anyone who's in denial about that is either dumb or dishonest. So Charlemagne is speaking to legitimate concerns that millions of people have with Donald Trump. But of course, Fox News' audience wasn't having any of it. And in the YouTube comment section for that video, here's just a small sample of the conservative backlash to him saying what he did. Anybody calling themselves Charlemagne the God thinks a little too much of themselves. You're saying this as a Trump supporter, presumably. I mean, have some fucking self-awareness. Charlemagne is a threat to common sense. Okay. Charlemagne's ignorance is embarrassing. Do your research, dude. Don't simply believe what people tell you. Ah, oh, I'm sure this is coming from a regular Fox News viewer, which is very ironic. That Charlemagne guy is a real clown. He ain't no God and he sold his soul. Any man who calls himself a god is not to be trusted. Okay, it's just the moniker. Holy shit, calm down. We never had a democracy. Not supposed to be a democracy. Not once is it mentioned. We're a republic. Okay, dipshit, take political science 101. A republic is a type of democracy, so you failed there. And last but not least, he didn't say suspend the Constitution. He said suspend the certification of the election until the investigation was complete. Nope, that's not what he said. So not necessarily surprising. It's exactly what I'd expect from Fox News' audience, but let's keep it real. These same people would be fine if Trump actually did suspend the Constitution because American conservatism has devolved into a fascist movement at this point. And so long as civil rights and civil liberties of their political opponents are taken away, they're fine losing some freedoms themselves so long as they get to own their political opposition. For example, the same side who screams free speech has nothing to say about Trump telling a room full of wealthy donors that he'd crush pro-Palestine protests on college campuses and deport students who peacefully protest. He also praised police for violently breaking up those protests and said that he'd set the movement back 25 or 30 years. I mean, the point of free speech is to protect speech that you disagree with in particular. We don't need protections for speech that everybody agrees with. But here you have a former president implying that he'll violently shut down peaceful protests and you don't hear a fucking peep from the free speech absolutists. They'll only mobilize if there's a free speech issue regarding a right-wing YouTuber that they follow who got demonetized or something like that. Listen, free speech as a principle is one thing, but when we're talking about the First Amendment, we're talking specifically about the government's shutting down speech. And here you have somebody who's saying, if I'm president, I'm gonna shut down that speech that's constitutionally protected, and they're like, no, this is, this is fine. 
As long as the libs and the lefties are mad, I'm cool with it. But I say all this to say that these people are already primed to accept authoritarianism. So even if they believed that Trump was a threat to democracy, they wouldn't care because they're cool with the dictator so long as it's one that they like. But to give you some additional context here, Charlemagne was on a panel on Greg Gutfeld's show, and they were reacting to comments made by Robert De Niro in New York City outside of the courthouse where Trump's trial was taking place. And uh, here's just a quick clip of that in case you haven't seen it. If Trump returns to the White House, you can kiss these freedoms goodbye that we all take for granted. And elections, forget about it. Do we want him running this country and saying, I'm not leaving, I'm dictator for life? The only way to preserve our freedoms and hold on to our humanity is to vote for Joe Biden for president. We're trying to be gentlemen in this world. The You're Democrats, washed up. you are gangsters. Excuse you're me. You are gangsters. You're washed up. You're washed up. So the comments that he made there went viral along with the subsequent confrontation that he got into with the MAGA chud, which was very entertaining to me. But I mean, nothing he's saying here is wrong. I won't say that we're never going to have elections ever again if Trump is elected, but it's not out of the realm of possibility to think that Trump could catapult us into a semi-dictatorship or at least put us on that trajectory if he is elected again because he poses a threat to democracy. But the people rightfully acknowledging the threat Trump poses to democracy also have to acknowledge that Biden is only in danger of losing in the first place because of his support for Israel's fascist prime minister who's doing a genocide in Gaza. So we have to acknowledge the elephant in the room and call out Biden's willingness to gamble with American democracy at the behest of a foreign country's genocidal leader. That's also really important because the stakes are high and you have to call out the person who's the threat, but also point out how his opponent is uh, not treating him like the threat that he is. I think that we have to be honest about all of this, right? But Gutfeld's panel downplayed the threat that Trump poses to democracy and dismissed things that Trump did. Case in point. And the argument that everyone's holding, even when, when Bill Maher was on, the mm -hmm. argument that they're really holding on to, you know he's not going to release power. Mm -hmm. As if this isn't the United States of America. Our military is number one, two, three, four, and five. He, he would f around and find out real quick. If, I'm not leaving. The same guys that protect him will be the same ones in handcuffs walking his ass out. That's not how this country works. It's ridiculous. And I know maybe I was the only one there. He's already been president and lost, <laughs> and he was out. Yeah. And even all the stuff, and he had every right, in my opinion, to question things. When you spend, and like I guess I always look at it from my own perspective. Whenever I had a job or I was someplace where I was doing well, but everyone around me was like, he wasn't the plan, or I don't want him here. So and I'm always hearing things, and, and if they made a Russian a whole thing, a whole fake thing, and all the fake things they were doing, and the two ridiculous impeachments, and then I lose the election, just as natural, just as a human being, you're going to be like the system that's been trying to kick me out the whole time. This dude who all of a sudden got 81 million votes, you're going to have a natural, like, this is, bull, this is BS. But the, this, my point is, like, he did things that any other person would do who was in his situation. Yeah. But it didn't matter how he felt, because Pence was like, you got to go. And that was it. So, I've never so seen he, another president try to, an, an attempted coup at his country, though. Mm. Well, neither did I. I saw a president who was pissed off and lost the game, just like when my team lose. But he, he lost. But, he didn't care. He said bad things. He made dumb statements. But if he was making a coup, we would have seen it. But those we dumb statements know. riled people up and did cause them to go rush, you know. The well, he, he did say protest peacefully. And it's a lousy coup if you but don't have any guns. He handled January 6th about as bad as you possibly could. Yeah. I, I'll give you that. But as far as that's what they're holding on, when we literally have people, groups now busting in any government building and demanding this, demanding that, and they're not treating the same thing. They didn't have to hire a team from Hollywood to tell us a story. Truth comes out. You don't need fancy camera angles and this, that, whatever. January 6th was ugly. It was stupid. But it wasn't to the level. That's all they're running on, where the rest of us are like, yeah, it happened. It sucked. What about my eggs at $8? What about my gas prices? Listen, I'll grant him that Americans probably care more about the economy than the potential threat that Trump poses to democracy because kitchen table issues are always going to be more salient to individuals because we're a very hyper individualized society and people are struggling. Right. But we just saw a lot of mental gymnastics all to pretend that Trump is definitely not going to try to pull any bullshit like he did last time, right? He's not going to try to stay in power longer than he's allowed. And even if he did, that wouldn't be permitted. And I think that's really naive because Trump is making sure 
that what he tried to do can actually be pulled off this time. All the grown up Republicans that were in the room with him last time that stopped him from doing a coup aren't going to be there this time. He's making sure of that. And Charlemagne brought up Project 2025. That's really important. Step number one of Project 2025 is to dismantle the administrative state by purging every single agency of lifelong bureaucrats and replacing them with Trump loyalists. That process is underway as we speak. They're already conducting interviews to see who's the most loyal. But don't take my word for it. Listen to Steve Bannon, who's pretty clear about what they're planning to do if Trump gets a second term. The DOJ is completely corrupt from top to bottom. Uh, it's going to have to be purged. Uh, it's going to have to be restructured. They're going to have to get rid of tons of billets over there and lots of personnel on the afternoon of January 20th, 2025. They understand this. And the FBI is the American Gestapo. As an institution, they are not worthy of going forward. That's going to have to totally be restructured. I, I've been strongly for getting rid of the FBI starting over again with some federal law enforcement to the degree you need it. Now, if you'll recall, Trump's coup attempt in part was stopped because of the DOJ's independence. He tried to appoint a stooge that would do his bidding and steal the election for him. But since people at the DOJ threatened to resign in mass, he couldn't do what he wanted to do. That stopped him. But this time, he's making sure that shit's not going to happen again. From the get-go, he will be getting rid of anyone who isn't a Trump loyalist, who doesn't believe that the election wasn't stolen. Which means that if there's another January 6th-like coup attempt or some sort of constitutional crisis, they're not going to fight him he'll say jump and they'll ask how high sir that's what they're making sure happens this time this is only possible if he strips these agencies of their autonomy this consolidation of power is the hallmark of dictatorships and yes i understand that each presidential administration expands power but this is a drastic shift that literally threatens the balance of power of our entire fucking government. It's no small thing. Now, there's also this revisionist history about Trump's election denialism, and everybody talks about how he has the right to question the election results. Yeah, that's true. He shouldn't, though, because it's stupid, and being butthurt shouldn't mean that you just pretend like it was stolen from you. But that's not just what he did. Nobody's denying that he has the right to question the results, even though he shouldn't. But why are we pretending like he didn't actually have an actual plan to steal the election? We're just forgetting about all of this. I mean, there was a coordinated campaign to get fake electors to replace legitimate electors. He pressured Georgia's secretary of state to find him votes he needed in a state that he lost. We all heard the fucking phone call. I mean, maybe that's not controversial to the average Fox News viewer, but just stop for a moment if you're a conservative and you're watching this and imagine that Biden or Obama tried to do that. Do you think that it'd be okay to just dismiss that? Of course not. But it goes back to them supporting dictatorships and they can support it if it's the right kind of dictator because they fundamentally just don't support the principle of democracy. People who do, however, see Trump for the threat that he is. So Charlemagne is absolutely right and good on him for speaking truth to Fox News' brain dead audience, even though they didn't want to hear what he was saying. But one last thing that I'll say is that, listen, I understand that our democracy is already barely alive. It's barely functioning as it is. Both parties are corrupt and controlled by lobbyists. Our politicians at this point are openly antagonistic towards their own constituents. Our institutions are failing us. Extremism has taken over. It's bad, and I get that. So I understand why people have grown frustrated with the concept of democracy. But protecting what's left of democracy is important, regardless of where you are on the political spectrum, right? Because the collapse of America isn't going to lead us to some new, better system. When America falls, it could get pretty fucking ugly. And all I'm saying is that there's a difference between a shitty, broken democracy that's devolving into a semi-police state and outright violent fascism without any constitutional protections or habeas corpus. In other words, we won't know what we've had until it's gone. And these idiots on Fox News aren't going to realize the threat that Trump poses to democracy until it's too late. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching, so I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.